It's pretty amazing that there is such a thing as professional Minecraft builders. There are entire teams of architects and designers who get paid to create entire worlds from a bunch of digital blocks. Minecraft's creativity has produced a whole industry of professional builders, one of which is Veruna, a group of 32 professional builders who get paid to craft spectacular creations for organizations and private clients. We spoke with Veruna's CEO and founder about the company's humble beginnings and how they build their amazing worlds. So um, I guess you could start off by telling me where we are. <laughs> All right, so this map is a map that Veruna made in 2016 so we were pretty new, we were only a few months old, and it is called Azul Islands. This was also one of our time lapses on our YouTube channel. Yes. yes. But basically, it's like fantasy-themed houses on um, three islands. This is the main island, it's the largest one. Mm -hmm. Little shops all over the place. I think up here there's a better vantage point, so cool. we can see the rest of the map. Um, <sighs> Yeah, so it's all these houses on these little balconies. That was the design that we thought of for this map. And wow. we kind of followed that and repeated it. Um, I've totally lost sight of where you are. <laughs> uh, I can teleport you, no worries. Okay. This is amazing. So this was back in 2016? 2016, yes. That's when this one was uh, built and released. So then actually at the bottom, there's a dock that is also kind of cool. I'll just teleport oh, you. Oh, yeah? There you go. Uh, so all these little shops, right? These actually don't have interiors. Same with the houses in this map. So oh, okay. we built this for a time lapse. We didn't really have time when we were filming the time lapse to also add interiors. So we only did the actual exteriors. Oh. But I think it turned out quite nice anyway. <laughs> yes. When did you guys start creating builds? In October 2016 is when the company was actually founded. But mm -hmm. I had been building just me personally for maybe a year before that. Oh, okay, cool. So actually right now I'm I'm a university student. Oh, you um, are? Yeah. <laughs> if you don't mind no, me asking, like, um, how old are you? I'm 19. <gasps> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you sound older. Maybe it's because um, <laughs> you talk about something you love as well. Wow. Yeah. Um... So I started, again, I started my sophomore year of high school. I'm actually a student at Carnegie Mellon University. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's in Pittsburgh. Uh, I'm going to be a sophomore next year. I started this company just uh, a little bit less than four years ago. So I was actually in high school when I, when I started it. I think in my sophomore year of high school, I kind of transitioned away from the more typical survival games. And I started really diving deeper into the creative side of Minecraft. So I started going on these servers that were like specialized build servers. So you would join and it was just a complete um, building community. So they had a lot of tools that helped helped you build. Mm -hmm. That's really when I was first introduced to tools like World Edit. This is one of the greatest tools that we have at our disposal. So see this ax in my hand? Mm -hmm. I can select two blocks. So like I can select this block here and then let's say this block here. And then with a single command, I can change that material uh, like that, right? Oh, yeah. So I wouldn't have to break all those blocks manually. <gasps> I um, see. I know exactly. That. That's There's so handy. Yeah. So like another thing that you can do with it is something like this. So I can create a circle without having to place all those blocks, right? Mm -hmm. Or a cylinder, actually it speeds up our workflow a lot because we don't have to place every single block and you can also copy and paste things. So if I wanted to copy this entire chip uh, and yeah. make another one right next to it, I would be able to do that as well. Yeah, because it was right before, uh, since I started the company in October, it was actually the summer, so June to August. And I was building on this server. I started posting photos of all the houses that I had made on different websites like Planet Minecraft mm -hmm. or Minecraft forums. And to my surprise, there was a few people who contacted me and offered to buy the houses that I had built. Oh, I didn't see, personally yeah. think they were that great, but a lot of people just really liked uh, the houses. So I was like, oh, this is this is actually really cool. There could be a market for Minecraft builds. But pretty quickly, I started doing some more research and I found that this was actually a whole um, kind of like industry within Minecraft that you could uh, actually thrive in. 
do you remember so the first why... um the first house you saw the, the little cabin you saw do you remember it <laughs> i don't remember it but i'm willing to bet it was pretty bad <laughs> <laughs> So basically, that is when I first discovered that I could like sell builds in Minecraft. Um, and so I continued making houses and posting photos of them and being like, hey, does anyone want to, to buy these? And I think a few weeks into to doing this, I started actually getting like order requests, like custom orders. Oh, so wow. people would be like, hey, I saw that you created, you know, these houses and you sell them. Would you also be able to create the Empire State Building for me or something like that? Mm hmm. I was like, yeah, absolutely. That would be awesome. And I actually ended up getting quite a few more orders. So by the end of the summer, when it was my time to go back to school, I realized there's no way I'm going to be able to, you know, finish all these orders by myself. Mm -hmm. So that's really when the first idea of maybe having a team or a company that could continue doing this when I'm uh, in high school popped into my, my head. I just have this image of you like going to classes and stuff and then obviously on this you've got this huge uh company i wouldn't say company yet but like you got the side hustle <laughs> exactly it was definitely a side hustle at the yeah. time yeah <laughs> that's kind of how we started out and then over the course of the years we went from four people that was really i think when i filed to um to become an llc we were four people oh yeah to now 34 people what are some of the um, backgrounds of um, the people you hire? Like, because do you hire like architects? I don't know. I, I have no idea really. <laughs> so I like to call them Minecraft architects, but yeah, in general, cool. they are people who are actually very skilled with architecture, mm -hmm. uh, and I I think they could definitely have a future uh, in architecture, but they don't exactly have a degree uh, or like a license in that. Mm -hmm. There's some statistic that I looked up the other day, but I'm pretty sure Varuna has uh, employees from 12 or over 12 countries. Oh, cool. So we hire a lot from um, Poland, from Germany, from Spain. There's a few in Australia. There's one in Jordan, one in Egypt, uh, obviously a lot from the United States. Mm -hmm. And then I think there's uh, one Peruvian uh, and a few Colombian um, members as well. Wow, oh, cool. Are these based on any sort of real buildings or were they just from your imaginations or the builders? Imaginations? Some of them are. Some of them are based on real buildings. We do a lot of that. Uh, this build is actually, I'm going to totally butcher the name, but it's called Monte Regioni. Oh, okay. And this is a real fort in uh, Tuscany, Italy. Whoa, cool. So we rebuilt this in 2017, moving along the timeline a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and everything is exactly as it is uh in real life so we used photos of from google maps and google earth to be able to really see the the fort from different angles and be able to recreate it so this was also a time lapse that again we released in 2017. oh cool so we normally have between two and eight members per commission mm -hmm. and they they actually plan everything out themselves so they take the details uh, they hop on like a call and they just start talking about the types of details that they want to add, maybe the design of the architecture. They they Google some photos for references to make sure everyone's on the uh, same page with, uh, you know, with actual images. And then from there, they start actually planning it. Now, I don't have any map on this server that shows the planning process, but it is kind of funny. It, it's kind of just a bunch of rectangles of wool on the ground, <laughs> marking where everything is going to be. So this would like be a house, right? Just something yeah. very simple. And then around it, uh, normally there's a lot of details. So you would take another color wool and then this, for example, would be like a path, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of like what our planned out builds look like. It's just a lot of wool rectangles and then kind of like scattered wool blocks for, for different details. So once the, the layout of the map is finished uh, and gets approved by the client, then at that point, they actually start building the walls and, and the houses. And basically at every step, we get the client's approval to make sure that we're moving in the right direction. You build the house, you build like the outline. Uh, if they like that, then you actually build the exterior of the house. If they like that, then you build the interior. And if they like that, then you just follow the design of that first initial house and you make 
30 more, <laughs> right? Wow, so it sounds like, like quite a lot of back and forth between the client as well. Yes, it's good it definitely that you include them a lot, lot, yeah. Whoa. So how, like, so a build like this, how long would it normally take you guys to, I guess, from mapping out on the ground to this finished product? There's obviously a huge scale um, or a huge range depending on how many builders I assign uh, mm -hmm. to a project like this. But this project is roughly 300 by 300 uh, blocks, that is. Mm -hmm. So something like this could be built in 10 days at the absolute uh, fastest. Mm -hmm. And then it could take up to a month or a month and a half if there's fewer builders really assigned uh, yeah. to this project. Yeah, sure. So I, I should also mention that as we've grown, we don't actually do percentages of commissions anymore. Now we pay each of our builders for their um, like hours that they put in. So it's just directly an hourly wage, oh, which okay. has allowed us to pay a lot more like fairly, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Because then it, it you know, the pay is directly proportional to the number of hours that they put in. So they get paid for their time. Oh, the last one that I actually uh, have here to showcase is the city of Arario itself, because I know that uh, you guys really like that map. <laughs> yes. Oh, I was hoping you'd show it to us. <gasps> cool. So here's the enormous tower. What? Okay, cool. Have you had any requests that were just like either too bonkers, too crazy, and you were like, I d like, I don't know, maybe that was just a bit outside your scope? <laughs> um, I think we have, but they end up um, not happening because of a budget constraint normally. Mm -hmm. So we've gotten some requests for like 20,000 by 20,000 maps, Whoa. which is very large. So city of Arario here, the city itself is 800 by 800. Mm-hmm. And the entire terrain is 1,500 by 1,500. So imagine 20,000 by 20,000. It would be pretty large. <laughs> uh, and in those cases, um, I have to figure out really how many hours it would take um, for our builders to create something like that. And normally it, it ends up being outside of the, the budget for the project anyway. Mm -hmm. But in those cases, what we end up doing uh, most times is that we actually end up showing photos of past maps to clients to help give them a better idea of scale. Because normally when they order a 20,000 by 20,000 map, they're not really aware of how large that is. Mm -hmm. uh, and they realize that no one would actually be able to play that entire map. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So most of the time they're not actually looking for that. Uh, but we have gotten some requests that are just enormous like that. Yeah, absolutely. Could you like name any of them? Are they from like, I don't know, like anything from, like Hogwarts or Game of Thrones or anything like that? One of the requests that we actually got recently uh, was, do you know the anime Naruto by any chance? Yes, that's the one with the running. He runs, the yeah, Naruto exactly, run. <laughs> exactly. um, someone tried to commission us um, to create the entire, <clears throat> the entire world oh. from that anime. So not just not just like the main city or like one kingdom, like the entire world. Um, and in that case, we, I mean, we probably would be able to do that. We just don't think that mm. it's maybe the best investment. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Um, that's one that I got recently, and I also have gotten some requests being like rebuild planet Earth. Um, I'm like, all right, that's probably a little bit out of our abilities, you know? Mm -hmm. Are there any sort of requests that you see a lot? Are there any like common buildings or landscapes or... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, so could you t talk me through some of them? Absolutely. There's kind of like three different types of clients that Varuna gets. Mm -hmm. The most obvious one is companies. So companies are seeing that Minecraft is a huge uh, marketing tool since so many people play it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of companies come to us and ask for uh, Minecraft maps or maybe like a recreation of their company's headquarters. <laughs> and then they like feature that, they showcase it, 
and that like draws a lot of attention. So it benefits them in that way. So it's seen as a marketing tool. So companies are one of our main clients. The other one is like organizations. There's a lot of really cool orgs. Uh, I think Block by Block is one of them. Although we've never created anything for Block by Block, we've created um, maps for other organizations that have like a similar purpose. So basically what Block by Block does is that it goes to different uh, communities that don't have access to like really high-end 3D design architecture software. Mm -hmm. And what they end up doing is that they use Minecraft as that 3D software. So they have different people from maybe these like low income uh, communities. They just have them build what they would like to see in their like city uh, or in their town. So if people want a new like supermarket, they'll actually prototype it by building it in Minecraft and seeing if it would be possible to, to add that. So it's a really cool way of giving, um, you know, everyday citizens a voice in what they want um, mm -hmm. built in their town and added. That is really cool. So that's one of the orgs. Uh, and we, we create a lot of work for, for orgs like that. One of our clients is actually a um, music festival that happens in Europe or in Italy yeah. specifically every year, but because of COVID-19, it can't actually happen this year. Mm -hmm. So they're making it a virtual festival. Oh, uh, I've heard of a lot of projects Minecraft. like that. Yeah. So actually a lot of really cool uh, implementations for Minecraft. Yeah, for and sure. And then the third kind of final client that is the, the most common is other Minecraft players. So a lot of Minecraft players will own a server and that's a whole business in itself. You know, if you're a server owner, you want as many people to connect to your server as possible because 5% of your total player base ends up donating to your server. So then that's how you actually survive and make money. So I'm just like flying throughout this world. I'm so mesmerized. <laughs> uh, it's, it's one of my favorites for sure. Yeah, this is fun. I think it's so cool that Minecraft has given so many people from my generation uh the opportunity to not only like make money off of a video game but more than that just like grow with a different community than the one that you have like on your block or in your town just like in-person relationships right mm -hmm. so actually most people in veruna since we're such an international community i only know one person in person <laughs> and that's that's something that a lot of people are like what <laughs> But that's, uh, I feel like that's definitely something from like younger as well. It's like you just meet people online, online communities, uh, online families as well. Yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, all our work that we do is just digitally and online. So I, I am personally very thankful to Minecraft for, for giving me that opportunity. So yeah, no, I love being able to work um, in the game every day. Thank you so much for chatting and showing me all these cool, these cool builds that you guys have done. I'm just going to get to the top of this tower. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you yes, so much for taking, uh, taking the time. Good luck with everything. <laughs> thank you. You too. All uh, right. Yeah. Take care. And we'll you. See you. Bye. Bye.